Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Theme Park 101. Today, we are taking a look at all the rides and attractions at all three parks in the Universal Orlando Resort. Let's start with the park that began it all, Universal Studios Florida. Once you've made your way through the infamous arch of Universal Studios Florida, you'll be entering straight into the brand new section of the park, Minionland. Previously known as Production Central, most of the area is made to look like a film set with the attractions housed within sound stages. The first attraction you will come to is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. This is a simulator ride that transforms you into minions before heading on an adventure through many different scenes. This is a great attraction for all the family to enjoy. You will exit through super silly stuff where you can find a wide selection of Despicable Me merchandise. Opposite Minion Mayhem is the newest attraction in the park, Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast. This ride is a very unique attraction that allows visitors to grab an interactive blaster and take part in the villain competition. Instead of a ride car, you will travel on a movable walkway system that will take you through a variety of different scenes. You can keep track of your score and may even appear on the leaderboard throughout the day. Along with the new attraction came another shopping location called Evil Stuff, specializing in villain-based merchandise. There are also some great new dining locations throughout the land, starting with Pop Anana Popcorn Cart, selling weird and wonderful flavors, including banana. Freeze Ray Pops has some unique and colorful popsicles, and Bake My Day is a specialized bakery selling minion-themed cupcakes, macarons, s'mores, and plenty of other delicious offerings. Also, replacing the infamous Monsters Cafe is the Minion Cafe. This wonderfully themed restaurant serves some delicious unique dishes, all themed to the amazing world of Minions. You can also meet your favorite Illumination characters throughout the day at the Illumination Theatre meet and greet. As with all my guides, I will be heading around the park clockwise, which takes us to the next area, New York. The first two attractions used to be located in Production Central, but have now been added to the New York area. First up is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, a steel roller coaster featuring a loop and several helixes. This coaster allows its riders to choose from a list of five songs to listen to during the ride. You can choose from the likes of My Chemical Romance, Kendrick Lamar, and even ABBA. Also, when you're on the ride, if you hold down the ride's logo for around 10 seconds, you can access a secret playlist, but you will need to enter a three-digit code for a particular song. Here are some of my favorites, but a full list can be found in a link in the description box below. Next up is Transformers The Ride 3D. On this dark ride, you team up with Optimus Prime and battle against the Decepticons in many exciting show scenes, featuring a variety of effects. Will you be able to defeat Megatron and keep hold of the Allspark for the Autobots? Come and find out on Transformers The Ride 3D. You can also meet Megatron, Bumblebee, or Optimus Prime in a meet and greet in an area close to the ride building throughout the day. Heading further into the land is Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon, a 3D motion simulator ride. The queue line features displays about the history of The Tonight Show, as well as a few interactive games for guests to try before entering the pre-show. There are also some regular performances by the Barbershop Quartet, the Ragtime Girls, and Hashtag Panda, both of which feature on The Tonight Show as well as making appearances throughout the ride. Once you go through to the main stage area, you will race with Jimmy Fallon while seeing many of the famous landmarks around New York City. As you walk towards the lagoon, you will come to the next attraction, Revenge of the Mummy. This is an indoor roller coaster ride based on the Mummy franchise. The queue and pre-show feature interviews with some of the cast, including Brendan Fraser playing himself. It explains that the curse from the movie is actually real, with Brendan being the only cast member not believing, which has dire consequences later on in the ride. The roller coaster has the ability to move from scene to scene at an incredible pace and features some amazing effects throughout, making it one of the fan favorite attractions at Universal Studios Florida. Before we move on to the next area, I can't forget the long-running Blues Brothers show that has actually been performing in the New York area since 1991. Make sure you check show times as you enter the park so you don't miss the amazing musical stage show that features many of the hit songs from the classic movie. Also nearby, you can catch Vamos Bailelo, a high-energy Latin dance experience that will definitely put a spring in your step. 
we now move on to the next area, San Francisco, where you can become part of the family on Fast and Furious Supercharged. The pre-show and queue line sees you enter a garage that features many of the franchise's amazing vehicles. You then climb aboard a party bus as this dark ride takes you on an exciting adventure with all the cast from the Fast and Furious movies. Let's hope it doesn't end in a disaster. You can also catch an impromptu performance from the Beat Builders, a group of construction workers using anything and everything as their percussion instruments, and they always put on a great show. We now move on to the most popular section in the park, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. Before you enter the land, you can catch the Hogwarts Express. This will take you directly to Hogsmeade over in Universal Orlando's other park, Islands of Adventure. Designed to look like London's King Cross Station, you will enter platform 9 and 3 quarters as you become part of the story. You will encounter characters from the popular Harry Potter series, including Hagrid, Dementors, and of course Ron, Hermione, and Harry, before seeing the beautiful Hogwarts and arriving in Hogsmeade. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks, but you will need a two-park ticket to ride this attraction. As you walk along a regular London street, you will notice the triple-decker night bus before finding the hidden entrance that will take you straight into Diagon Alley. It features an amazing selection of shops, restaurants, and attractions. Within the amazing Diagon Alley, there are a few exciting stage shows, including a puppet show reenacting stories from the tales of Beedle the Bard and a live musical performance by Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. Both of these performances help to bring the area to life and are great additions to the land. The flagship attraction in Diagon Alley is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. This is a 3D motion-based steel roller coaster dark ride that is based around the wizarding bank Gringotts. You enter the bank surrounded by amazing audio animatronic goblins that interact with the guests before joining Harry Potter and the gang as you head down into the vaults and search for one of Voldemort's Horcruxes. You will meet many different characters as well as some magical creatures seen throughout the attraction. This is a great ride with many exciting elements and is a must try for any fan of the Harry Potter franchise. You can also head to the Gringotts Money Exchange to trade your dollars into Gringotts banknotes which can be used in Diagon Alley, Hogsmeade and other select areas in the Universal Orlando Resort. Overall, Diagon Alley is a great addition to the park and we would suggest arriving early to keep those wait times down. If you're enjoying the guide so far, don't forget to hit the like button as it really helps us to share this video to more visitors. We now move on to what used to be one of the largest areas in the park, but is now the smallest. World Expo only houses one attraction, Men in Black Alien Attack. This is an interactive shooting dark ride which begins as a training exercise before an announcement of an alien prison ship crash landing in New York, where you are instantly sent to battle the many different audio animatronic aliens before they cause too much damage. This is a great attraction for you to battle for the highest score against your family and friends to become the best recruit. Further around the lagoon, you will come to Springfield, the home of the Simpsons. You can have a beer in Moe's Tavern, grab some food in Krusty Burger, and see a host of characters throughout this amazing land. The main attraction is The Simpsons Ride, a huge simulator that replaced the Back to the Future attraction in 2008. On the ride, you'll be introduced to a cartoon theme park called Krusty Land. However, Sideshow Bob is loose from prison and seeks revenge on Krusty and the Simpson family by taking over the park and destroying the ride. On this six minute adventure, you'll recognize plenty of popular Simpsons characters as you try to escape from Sideshow Bob's demolition attempts. The ride utilizes the huge IMAX screens and ride cars from the previous attraction. Near the entrance of the ride, Crustyland Carnival Games gives you the chance to win a Simpson themed prize at the various Midway stations. In 2013, Springfield was expanded, which included a new aerial carousel attraction called Kang and Kudos Twirl and Hurl. This is based on the aliens that feature in the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. You will ride a UFO and spin past many interactive Simpsons characters as you join the aliens in destroying Springfield. The next area, Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone, is currently going through a major transformation and will be changing into DreamWorks land. There are still a couple of attractions in the Kid Zone area that haven't closed. First up is the stage show Animal Actors on Location. This is a 20 minute live show featuring trained animals from movies and TV shows performing various tricks and showcasing their talents. 
Finally, there is the classic Dark Ride E.T. Adventure. This attraction was created by Universal along with the movie's director Steven Spielberg, who you can see before entering the indoor queue line giving information about the ride. As you enter inside, you'll be transported to a heavily forested area reminiscent of the film, with many props and easter eggs lying around. You'll then sit on a bicycle themed ride vehicle as you are tasked to return E.T. to his home planet. You'll perform the classic scene as you fly over the police car before going to the green planet and seeing all of E.T.'s family and friends before returning home. This is a quintessential universal attraction and I hope it remains in the park for years to come. We now head to the final area in the park, Hollywood starting with Universal's Horror Makeup Show, a live stage show themed as a behind-the-scenes presentation of special effects used in horror films. A pre-show allows guests to walk through and view various set pieces and props from films such as the Universal Classic Monsters series. This show has some audience participation and can be very humorous as the hosts demonstrate how different effects are used in movies. This show is very easy to miss, but I highly recommend you to check it out. You can also see a host of other classic characters in Hollywood throughout the day. Look out for Betty Boop, Doc Brown, Scooby-Doo and the gang, as well as some other popular characters. The final attraction in this guide is the Bourne Stunktacular, a live-action stunt stage show based on the Jason Bourne film series. This uses a mixture of moving set pieces and screens to travel across three continents and includes chase scenes, fist fights, and a bunch of parkour. If you're a fan of the Bourne series or stunts in general, you'll be impressed by the stunt performers and the state-of-the-art technology used throughout the show. Unfortunately, there aren't any parades or nighttime spectaculars at Universal Studios Florida currently, but the park did announce that they are working on new entertainment to replace the Universal Superstar Parade and Universal Orlando's Cinematic Celebration, which we hope will be coming to the park as soon as possible. Obviously, with the third park epic universe currently under construction and with its ambitious deadline for 2025, you might be mistaken that Universal Studios Florida will have nothing new to offer for the next few years. This couldn't be further from the truth, as a few projects are already underway. The new DreamWorks land is well into the construction phase and is slated to open in summer 2024. It will feature a mixture of new attractions as well as utilizing some of the previous rides and buildings. The Woody Woodpecker Coaster will be rethemed into a trolls based coaster called Trolley Coaster. The Curious George Wet Play Area and Ball Factory has been rumored to be rethemed to Kung Fu Panda, which will also include an interactive meet and greet that will use special digital puppetry. The land will also include a Donkey and Shrek meet and greet in the newly constructed Shrek's House and Swamp area. The show building for the previous DreamWorks destination is also intact, but we are unsure if they will bring back the previous show, create a whole new entertainment offering, or use the space for meet and greets with other popular DreamWorks characters. We can't wait for this new land, which will be another great area for younger visitors to explore. So that wraps up all the rides and shows within Universal Studios Florida. Let's head to the amazing water park at Universal's Volcano Bay. This is the first water park to be created by Universal itself and it has an awesome tropical Polynesian theme with the main feature being the Krakatau volcano at the center of the park, which also serves as the park's icon. It is open all year round and includes all the amenities that you expect with a water park, plenty of changing rooms and lockers, as well as a nice selection of restaurants and bars that makes it a great day out. The park is split into four sections, and you will first enter into the Wave Village. This area is home to the Watari Beach, the largest beach area in the park, with plenty of sun lounges and shady areas for you to relax and catch some rays. This beach leads to the Wave Pool with the amazing views of the volcano and the beautiful waterfalls. Next to the Wave Pool is a more relaxing pool area called the Reef. In this pool, you'll also be able to view riders coming down one of the slides via a tube that goes straight through the reef. Before we take a look at the next area, the park uses a unique reservation system called Tapu Tapu, which gives guests a special wristband that can be used to buy food and merchandise, as well as reserving a place on a number of the water slides, so you don't have to waste all day waiting in lines. And there are also a few interactive elements around the park that can be triggered by the Tapu Tapu wristband. As with all my guides, I'll head around the park clockwise, which takes us to the largest section of the park, the Rainforest village. 
To the left of the Wutari beach, you will find two awesome slides and a relaxing pool area next to the volcano. The Puka Uli Lagoon features plenty of playful elements that the younger guests will love, and you'll also be able to watch riders splash down from above from the Oh No and the Oh Ya drop slides. These Hulk inspired slides take you along a super fast ride with plenty of twists and turns. The Oh No drop slide is the purple one that ends with a six foot drop into the final pool, and the Oh Ya is the green version with a four foot drop into the lagoon. These are perfect slides for fans that like a bit of a thrill. Further into the rainforest village is the Teawa, the fearless river. Here you will need to swap tubes for US Navy approved life jackets as you take a white water ride along the roaring river with churning rapids and choppy waves. You will travel through caves under the volcano and encounter a few tikis on the way. Along the river, you will spot the four tube slides called the Taniwa tubes. The two green slides are named Tonga and the pair of blue slides are called Raki. And can all be ridden solo or in pairs on the two-man rafts. Make sure to watch out for the mischievous tiki statues as they could spray you at any given moment. Next are the Maku Puehi round raft rides, which both accommodate up to five riders, so it's perfect for all the family. The Maku takes you down the lava tube path at high speeds as you head into the volcanic gorge before spinning around the three saucer like bowls and finally suck through the watery vortex into the calm pool at the end. And the Puehi takes you through a dark winding cavern before giving you zero gravity hang time as it takes you through a huge funnel before splashing to safety at the bottom. Before we take a look at the amazing slides inside the volcano, let's head to the third section of the park, the River Village, featuring some exciting water slides and some areas for the younger guests to enjoy. It is also home to the Kopiko Way Winding River, a classic lazy river that takes you all around River Village and through the Krakatau Volcano and caves, as well as featuring lots of interactive elements. Just grab a tube and enjoy the scenery of Universal's Volcano Bay. At one of the exits of the winding river, you can try the Honu Ika Moana, a pair of multi-passenger raft rides. The Ika Moana is a fun raft ride that takes riders on a nice twisting journey through a mixture of half open and fully enclosed tubes. The Honu ramps it up a little as it includes two massive walls that sweeps riders up before shooting them down the remainder of the slide. On the other side of the river village are the two different water play areas. The Tok Tiki Reef is designed for the smallest visitors and features a mini volcano, water shooting tikis, some singing whales and a few small water slides that will keep the little ones refreshed in the hot Florida sun. Next is the Runner Mucka Reef, which is aimed at older children that aren't quite ready for the full thrill slides. It features a three-story water fortress filled with water guns, dump cups, bubbling geysers, and of course some awesome water slides that are all beautifully themed to an exotic coral reef. It's now time to take a look at the fourth and final section by heading into the Krakatau Volcano to see the amazing selection of thrilling water slides. First up is the Punga Racers, which gives you the chance to race against three other riders on these fast and exciting body slides. Race to the bottom to see who will be crowned the next water god. The next two attractions share the record for the tallest drop capsule slides in the world at a massive 125 feet. The Kala and Tai Nue Serpentine Body Slides are a pair of tube slides that plunge guests from a trapdoor as the slides interwine as they go through, around and down the volcano before ending in a luscious pool at the base of the Krakatoa. The other world record holding water slide is the Kokiri Body Plunge. This near vertical speed slide drops you from a trapdoor as you plummet the whole 125 foot slide before being shot through a glass tube across the reef and ending on the Watari Beach. This is definitely not for the faint hearted and is the most thrilling attraction in the whole of Volcano Bay. We now come to our final attraction in this guide, the amazing and unique Krakatoa Aqua Coaster. This four man raft 
Staff Ride takes you on an adventure through the mist and into the dark twists and turns within the volcano. And with the use of special motors, it can propel riders uphill, giving a thrilling and exciting ride. You will also need to head straight through the beautiful shimmering waterfall before ending your journey in the river village. If you don't want to try out any of the slides within the volcano, you can still go inside through a hidden cave where you can meet Vol, the spirit of Krakatau, with the use of your Tapu Tapu wristband. This is one of the greatest things about Volcano Bay. The park is so beautifully themed that you can really enjoy the aesthetic and atmosphere of the park without the need of riding any of the attractions. Volcano Bay also has plenty of amazing dining locations throughout that include all the usual delights like pizzas and burgers, as well as some healthier options like poke bowls and salads. To make sure you get the most out of your day at the park, I would aim to arrive 30 minutes before the official opening time and make use of the Tapu Tapu slide reservation system as the wait time can get pretty long. Once you've dried off from your trip to Volcano Bay, we can head to the amazing Universal's Islands of Adventure. You enter the park into the Port of Entry Island, which along with guest services is also comprised of many dining and shopping locations. You'll also be able to find the recognizable Pharaoh's Lighthouse that each night helps to guide visitors to the exit of the park. As with all my guides, I'll be heading clockwise around the park, which takes us to the next area, Marvel Superhero Island. Based on the comic book versions of the characters, you can enjoy this amazing island and its four awesome attractions. First up is the Incredible Hulk Coaster. This is probably the most recognizable ride in the park due to its size and distinctive green track. This huge launched roller coaster will see General Ross perform gamma radiation experiments on subjects to try and transform them into Hulk-like creatures, which creates a lot of energy. The coaster features seven inversions and went through a hefty refurbishment in 2016 that included new tracks and a complete new storyline. This is an incredible ride packed with thrills and is still one of my favorite coasters of all time. Next up is Storm Force Accelatron, a teacup ride where you team up with Storm, the weather controlling member of the X-Men and Professor X as you take on their arc enemy Magneto. The faster you spin, the more energy you can create to defeat the evil mastermind. We now move on to the amazing adventures of Spider-Man, which is still my favorite ride in the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. This dark ride has a great mixture of 3D screens, practical sets and effects, as well as a really fun and exciting storyline featuring lots of Spider-Man villains. The same ride system has gone on to be used for Transformers The Ride over in Universal Studios Florida and the newly opened Jurassic World Adventure in Universal Studios Beijing, which just goes to show the popularity of this entertaining ride. It has also won many awards, including Best Dark Ride for 12 years in a row at the Golden Ticket Awards. There is a reason why many people love to ride this attraction, so make sure you join Spider-Man the next time you visit Universal's Islands of Adventure. Close to the exit of this ride, you will get the chance to meet your favorite Marvel hero or villain in a special meet and greet throughout the day. You'll be able to meet Captain America, Doctor Doom, the Green Goblin, some of the X-Men, and of course Spider-Man makes an appearance. Sticking with Doctor Doom, you can test your fears over on Doctor Doom's Fearful. This space shot ride will launch riders up and down the drop tower as Doctor Doom harvests your fear to take over the world. If you're not too scared, you'll be able to see some amazing views of Islands of Adventure and the whole of the Universal Orlando Resort. It's now time to move on to the next island, Toon Lagoon, that features three water-based attractions. The first being Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls, a classic log flume ride based on the Canadian Mountie from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. The ride system contains three drops, the last and steepest of which is 75 feet. It is a hybrid flume coaster that utilizes steel track to not only shoot guest-filled logs down the final drop, but under the water's surface and over a bunny hill. Of course, you are likely to get soaked, but not as much as our next attraction, Popeye and Bluto's Bilge Rat Barges. This is a river rafting water ride based on everyone's favorite sailor, Popeye. You will need to help him save olive oil from Bluto while careening through the unpredictable rapid waters. You'll get very wet on this attraction, so I would suggest wearing a rain mac or riding this attraction earlier in the day to give you a chance to dry off in the hot sun. 
to add insult to injury, the final attraction in Toon Lagoon is Me Ship the Olive, a playground for children themed to Popeye's ship, featuring guest operated water sprayers that can further soak those riding Popeye and Bluto's build wrap barges. Also, throughout the day, in the main section of Toon Lagoon, you can meet a variety of characters, including Betty Boop, Popeye, and Olive Oil. We now go to the newest and smallest area in the park, Skull Island, which features just the one attraction, Skull Island Reign of Kong. This has a fantastically themed queue line where you will meet a shamaness, as well as having a chance to check out some of the creatures from the island. You will grab some 3D glasses before boarding a huge safari truck as an audio animatronic tour guide takes you to a giant temple to look for the giant ape. The indoor section uses screens either side of the vehicle which gives the illusion of actually being transported to Skull Island, surrounded by all the dinosaurs, huge bugs and of course King Kong himself as they battle it out throughout the attraction. At the end you will meet the huge animatronic of Kong but don't get too close as he may not be in the best of moods. The next island is Jurassic Park, where we'll begin with a classic Jurassic Park river adventure. You will go on a boat tour through the herbivore reserve before the boat is knocked off course, causing riders to come face to face with multiple carnivores, including a T-Rex. There is a huge drop at the end of the ride and you will most likely get wet, but in the hot Florida sun, this is not too much of a problem. Next is Camp Jurassic, a huge play area for younger visitors to explore. They'll have lots of fun with the slides, climbing nets, water cannons and much more. Within Camp Jurassic there is another attraction, Pteranodon Flyers, a suspended roller coaster that flies you around Camp Jurassic at a nice relaxing pace, giving you an awesome vantage point of Jurassic Park and other areas of islands of adventure. This is aimed at younger guests, so adults can only ride this attraction if they accompany a rider under 56 inches. This attraction can easily get long wait times so you can make use of the virtual line through the Universal app where you can reserve a place and return at a later time. While you wait, you might want to check out the Jurassic Park Discovery Center where you can find a restaurant as well as an interactive play area that allows visitors to learn through various activities and mini shows, including a small laboratory where guests can watch a baby velociraptor hatch from an egg. Although the land is based on Jurassic Park, all the new attractions that have been added over the last few years have Jurassic World theming, but Universal have yet to confirm if this whole island will be rethemed. You can get up close and personal with Owen Grady's Raptor Blue in the Raptor Encounter. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get a photo with a popular dino. The final attraction in Jurassic Park is the newest in Islands of Adventure, the amazing Jurassic World Velocicoaster. This launch roller coaster features two high speed launches, a signature 155 foot tall top hat, four inversions, including the beautiful Heartline roll, and reaches a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour. This is an exhilarating experience and has quickly become a favorite in the coaster community. Along with being a great coaster, it also features perfect theming with the Velociraptors being present throughout the queue and ride. This coaster is definitely not for the faint-hearted, so if you enjoy thrills, make sure you ride the Velocicoaster. If you're enjoying the guide so far, don't forget to hit the like button as it helps us to share it to more visitors. We now move on to the most popular island in the park, the wizarding world of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. Let's start with the first attraction, Hogwarts Express. Not only does this train transport visitors between the two parks, it also includes a unique storyline on both of the journeys. As you head from Hogsmeade to King's Cross Station over in Universal Studios Florida, you'll encounter Centaurs in the Forbidden Forest, the spooky Malfoy Mansion, and spot the night bus as it squeezes between buildings when you arrive in London. It is the perfect way to travel between the two parks, but you will need a two-park ticket to ride this train. The main attraction in the land is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, a motion-based dark ride. The queue line is fantastically themed to the hallways and rooms within Hogwarts, which feels like an attraction within itself. The ride will explore many different recognizable scenes from the books and films and features a plethora of Harry Potter characters and creatures in a mixture of screens, audio animatronics and special effects. This is a fantastic attraction that always has a long wait time so I would suggest either investing in an express pass or joining the single rider line to bring your wait time down. 
during construction, some of the Lost Continent Island was taken over by the addition of the Wizarding World, so some of the attractions have been redesigned or rethemed to fit the Harry Potter theme. The first is the Flight of the Hippogriff, which used to be known as the Flying Unicorn. This is a junior outdoor roller coaster where Hagrid will teach visitors how to fly a hippogriff. You will see plenty of theming throughout, including Hagrid's hut and the Forbidden Forest, as well as some great views of all of the Wizarding World. In 2019, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure opened in Hogsmeade. It was the former location of the old Dueling Dragon roller coasters, which were renamed and redesigned to Dragon Challenge in 2010, but it was then closed in 2017 to make way for the new coaster. Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure has seven separate launches, which makes it the roller coaster with the most launches in the world. It is also nearly a mile long, making it the longest coaster in Florida. And at a cost of over $300 million, it is one of the most expensive roller coasters ever created. You'll join Hagrid on an adventure with lots of magical creatures on display. You'll see Fluffy, the three-headed dog, some Cornish pixies, a centaur, and many more. This is a must-ride in Islands of Adventure, so make sure you get here early. Hogsmeade also features plenty of shopping and dining locations. You can buy a wand in Ollivander's, chug on some butter beer in the Hog's Head, or try on some robes in Dervish and Bangs. The possibilities are truly endless. Throughout the day, you can watch one of the two shows. Frog Choir is an a cappella performance of some Hogwarts students and their frogs as they sing familiar wizarding songs and the Triwizard Spirit Rally sees the students of Hogwarts, Boobatons and Durmstang perform dances to cheer on their classmates. Also, there are three different nighttime projection shows that light up the beautiful Hogwarts Castle throughout the year. The Nighttime Lights at Hogwarts Castle is the main show that celebrates the four houses of Hogwarts, backed by the legendary John Williams musical backdrop. The Dark Arts at Hogwarts Castle sees Voldemort, Death Eaters, and a host of other cruel legions take over the Wizarding School, which begins in the autumn and over Halloween. And then, in the winter months, the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts brings ghosts singing Christmas characters carols, students building snowmen, and other wintry offerings. Hogsmeade has been a huge success for good reason, and even if you're a casual Harry Potter fan, you can't help but feel the magic in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. The next island is the Lost Continent, which is themed to ancient myths and legends. It is divided into two sections, an ancient Arabian marketplace called Simbad's Bazaar and the Atlantis-themed Lost City. There was also a third section called Merlin Wood with a medieval theme, but the majority of that area was taken when the Wizarding World of Harry Potter was added to the park in 2010. You'll be able to find the Mystic Fountain in Simbad's Bazaar, an interactive attraction that tells jokes and will try to outwit anyone that tries to interact with it. Be careful as it has the power to splash anyone one that it deems unworthy. The Lost Continent is also home to Mythos, which is one of the best restaurants on Universal property. This full-service restaurant offers Mediterranean, Asian, and American cuisine in a beautiful setting and has won many Best Theme Park Restaurant Awards. We now head to the final island in the park, Seuss Landing, which is of course based on the works of the popular author, Dr. Seuss. First up is If I Ran the Zoo, an interactive playground inspired by Gerald McGrew's Unusual Zoo. Younger visitors will be able to enjoy discovering all the strange and wonderful animals alongside all the slides, caves, and wet play area. Next is the flagship attraction of this island, the Cat in the Hat. This is a fun dark ride bringing to life the story of the popular book through a mixture of large sets, screens, and audio animatronics. Will the mess created by the cat and the things be cleaned up before mum returns? Find out on this great attraction that is one of the most popular children's rides in the park. Right next to the cat in the hat is the spinning attraction, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, which is based on the book of the same name. You will be able to control your own fish as you try to avoid the water sprays by listening carefully to the onboard riddle. Throughout the day, you'll be able to enjoy the musical show, Oh, The Stories You'll Hear, featuring all your favorite Dr. Seuss characters like The Grinch, The Lorax, Cat in the Hat, and Sam I Am. A storyteller will read one of the popular books as the characters reenact the stories. This is a great show and a nice change of pace from the hustle and bustle of the park. 
Next is the Caro Susel, a themed carousel where you'll be able to ride on some of the creatures found in the popular works of Dr. Seuss. The final attraction in Seuss Landing is the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride, which is an elevated monorail that gives a tour around Seuss Landing. There are two ride tracks, one will tell the stories of the Sneetchies and the other will be more of a compilation of all Dr. Seuss books. This is a great relaxing ride while taking in all the amazing sights and sounds of Seuss Landing. So that wraps up all the rides and attractions within all three parks at the Universal Orlando Resort. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to know more about Universal Studios Hollywood, then check out this guide video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Theme Park 101.